Thank you all for listening and watching my videos, please subscribe and like my channel Master Coolits. Hoping that you will not skip my ads, it's a big help for me by not skipping it, thank you so much. Dragon Shadow. The Rise. Rebecca watched Zane Martell and Eric Helms' figures fade into the distance, her shoulders slumping in defeat. That guy you mentioned before, the one who understood the power of wind before you, was that Zane Martell? Guiji approached, his eyes wide with surprise. Yeah, the very same Zane Martell. Hard to believe, right? He used to be a nobody, but now he's something else. Once Rebecca had been a prodigy too, but in the Sky Shadow secret level, surrounded by other geniuses, she had quickly faded into the background. Zane Martell and Eric Helm stepped through the door at the base of the mysterious citadel. The wide passage was lined with top quality jade, the walls glowing softly under the cool breeze. They saw no one else, as the others were likely aiming for the most hidden places in search of treasures. The sounds of chaotic fighting echoed through the tunnel. As they stepped into the square, they saw those who had charged ahead, whether stars of ten palaces or great generals, locked in fierce battles with demonic beasts. It's the Cloud Iron Beast. The beasts, towering three or four meters tall with silver needle-like fur, looked like mountain chimpanzees, but with two horns on their heads. Their fur was as hard as steel. The square was a battlefield. Over 20 Cloud Iron Beasts clashed with the warriors, blood flying as powerful moves struck the beasts down in two or three hits. At the far end of the square, David Sullivan led the group, placing his hands on the gate and pushing it open with a loud creak. Inside was an arsenal filled with all kinds of weapons. Knives, spears, halberds, maces, bows, all neatly arranged on shelves, each item glowing with a dazzling light. It's an arsenal! We've hit the jackpot! We've come to the right place! The others rushed in, their eyes gleaming with excitement. Just in time. I've been wanting to change my weapon, and here's my chance. Change weapons? Who said you could take anything from this arsenal? We found it. It belongs to Eastern Palm. Excuse me, since when did this arsenal become yours? Finders, keepers. Finders, keepers? That's rich. If we hadn't opened the door, would you have found it? Get out of here. If you want something, go find it somewhere else. This place is ours. The atmosphere grew tense the tension palpable as faces flushed with anger, and hands moved to the hilts of their weapons. Each weapon in the arsenal seemed extraordinary, with the potential to be third-grade genuine energy artifacts, maybe even fourth or fifth grade. Such artifacts could be worth tens of millions of crystals. As the arguments intensified, the arsenal became a powder keg, ready to explode. The air was thick with suspense, the outcome uncertain, leaving everyone on edge. Back off. We have as much right to these weapons as you do. You wish! Over our dead bodies! The confrontation was reaching a boiling point, and the slightest spark could ignite a fierce battle for the treasures of the mysterious citadel. What would happen next? Would the arsenal's riches be claimed in peace or soaked in blood? The tension hung heavy in the air, the answers just out of reach. Wait, why are we even getting into a squabble now? Let's see if any of us can pick up the weapon first. Deputy Quinn reminded. Everyone looked at each other and started to attack. Zane Martell walked towards a long sword that sat quietly on the shelf in front of him and held it tightly. Bong. The long sword did not move at all, as if it were stuck to the shelf. He gasped. What's going on? Is it that heavy? The others found themselves in the same situation. No matter how hard they tried, they were unable to move any weapon. I refuse to back down. In the midst of the great generals, Deputy Quinn rolled up his sleeves, and his entire body erupted with vital energy, forming a hurricane around his body. Suddenly, he clenched his fist. Violent shaking sounds could be heard, but the weapon only shook a little and did not leave the shelf at all. Damn it. Does this mean that I can only watch and not touch so many weapons the mysterious Citadel has to offer? The Deputy Quinn was angry and slammed his fist on the weapon. It hadn't been easy for them to find the palace and enter this arsenal. However, they could only appreciate the weapons from a distance, but no touching was allowed. In the following half an hour, they tried all kinds of methods, but nothing worked. There was no formation here, nor any hint. Unless the conditions were met, it was absolutely impossible to move any weapon.
The crowd began to lose their patience and cursed angrily. Whoever wants it, just take it. Anyway, one man's trash is another man's treasure. What a colossal waste of time. As he spoke, one after another filed out of the arsenal and started exploring in the other directions of the palace. The mysterious citadel had nothing but treasures. Although the weapons in the arsenal would not budge, there was something else awaited. It would be a pity if one missed it. Soon, the men from both sides left in disappointment. Even Eric Helm shook his head and sighed. Let's go, Zane Martell. These good things have nothing to do with us. Why don't we go somewhere else and take a look? If we're late, they'll take all the good stuff. However, an idea suddenly flashed across Zane Martell's mind, and he said to Eric Helm, You go first. I want to try again. Eric Helm felt that it was very strange, but he decided to leave first. After he left, Zane Martell took out a green-colored jade bottle, poured out ten green anurin, and said, It's mealtime. Don't let me down. Zane Martell thought that if he would not be able to take away the weapons here, he might as well treat them as the food for the green anurin. However, he was worried that even the green anurin was incapable of doing anything to the weapons. But the next moment, Zane Martell was completely relieved. As soon as they encountered these weapons, the insects immediately had a big appetite and quickly began to eat them. In a matter of seconds, they had demolished a whole weapon. It's really effective. There are so many weapons and even third or fourth grade genuine energy artifact. You're lucky. He was delighted and teased the insects. Although they ate at an amazing speed, there were only 10 of them. There were thousands of weapons stored in the weapon storage box, and it was almost impossible to eat them all in a short time. In order to prevent the good things from being snatched away by others, Zane Martell took back the green anurin after half a day. Hey, the bug's color seems to have deepened, and it has almost completely turned black. Is it because the more food you eat, the darker it becomes? Although the time was short, the green anurin had eaten up one-tenth of the weapons. Then he hurried to catch up with the others. Two hours later, there was a tremor in the passageway. In front of Zane Martell, a figure suddenly flew over and crashed down beside his feet. Zane Martell recognized this person. He was Deputy Quinn from Eastern Palm, but he was already dead. What had happened in the passageway? Who had killed this person? The mystery hung heavy in the air, leaving Zane Martell and the listeners on edge eager for answers. Bang, bang! Suddenly, two more corpses landed by Zane Martell's feet. These corpses belonged to the Seven Kingdoms Alliance. Zane Martell's brows furrowed deeper in confusion. What the devil is happening? Is there any danger ahead? As Zayn Martell took a step forward, chaos erupted in the vast hall ahead. Both Eastern Palm and the Seven Kingdoms Alliance were embroiled in a massive fight. Golden light and flames soared into the sky, and their auras clashed like tigers in a deadly dance. Bang, bang! In the distance, Caleb Pierce and David Sullivan's clash sent tremors through the earth and mountains. Their overbearing vital energy collided, creating a rolling wave of air that swept in all directions. Around them, Kevin Strong, Guiji, the girl in the purple dress, Kai Rivers, and the rest of the stars of Ten Palaces were locked in a fight to the death with the great generals. Zay Martel was shocked and bewildered. What happened during my absence? As he tried to make sense of the scene, a disciple from Eastern Palm rushed out of the chaotic melee. He was at the seventh stage of the intermediate level, his face twisted with anger. What the hell are you looking at? The Seven Kingdoms Alliance is trying to snatch things from us. Go to hell! The disciples' momentum surged, and an illusory saber shadow fell directly from the sky towards Zane Martell. But before it could strike, Eric Helm's voice rang out. A sneak attack? Nice try, but no. A crimson saber slashed through the air, severing the disciples' body. Zane Martell, still muddled, turned to Eric Helm. Eric Helm, what happened? Why did they fight for no reason? It's all because the two of them discovered the celestial life pill and wanted to take it for themselves. The people on both sides didn't want outsiders to get such a precious pill, leading up to this pandemonium. Celestial life pill? Zane Martell had never heard of it. However, something that could cause the heads of the stars of ten palaces and the seven great generals to risk their lives was definitely extraordinary. In front of him, the long sword in David Sullivan's hand emitted a cold aura. As he waved his hand, frost condensed around him. 
Caleb Pierce, come what may, I must obtain the celestial life pill. Bullshit. What gives you the right to do that? Caleb Pierce did not give in. The right to kill you here. David Sullivan's face turned ferocious. Kill me? Feel free to try and let your strength speak for you. With an angry roar, Caleb Pierce put his palms together, and a golden giant phantom appeared in his hand. Although the shadow was vague, it showed the prototype of a spirit, and its boundless momentum rolled out. Come on, David Sullivan, come and get me. As soon as he finished speaking, a terrifying blast of air rolled out. Alarmed, the crowd hurriedly dodged the sharp edge. Those at the peak of the ninth stage of the intermediate level, who were close to the Great Circle, could already explore the threshold of the advanced level. Although he hadn't fully condensed a spirit yet, Caleb Pierce could display an ounce of its strength. Some people witnessed this and began to talk in surprise. The illusory image of the spirit. Has Caleb Pierce's strength reached such a level? But in the face of Caleb Pierce, David Sullivan showed no fear. The ice-cold aura emanating from his longsword could freeze everything, spreading a boundless, terrifying chill. The power of nature, the power of ice. David Sullivan stood like a towering iceberg, matching Caleb Pierce's giant shadow. Are these the top members of the Stars of Ten Palaces and the Seven Great Generals? They're too powerful. The battlefield was a whirlwind of deadly clashes, with titanic forces colliding and the air thick with tension. As Zane Martell watched the chaos unfold, his heart pounded with anticipation. What would happen next? Would Caleb Pierce or David Sullivan claim the celestial life pill, or would the ensuing battle bring even greater calamity? The answers lay in the heart of the storm, where only the strongest would prevail. Even Kevin Strong, known for his arrogance, frowned. These two monsters, bang, puff, 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 the shadow of the giant suddenly moved, colliding with the ice force, sending horrible pressure everywhere. In an instant, the whole hall shook violently, and tiles kept falling from the sky. The power of the ice spread out, freezing most of the hall. Some innocent spectators were hurt and turned into ice sculptures. Finally, there were people on both sides who couldn't stand this kind of battle and intervened to stop them. Enough! Stop it! That's right. If you continue to fight, the entire palace will be destroyed by you. Seeing this, David Sullivan gritted his teeth and cursed. There's one easy way for me to stop. We, Eastern Palm, want all ten of the Celestial Life Pills. In your dreams. Caleb Pierce was enraged. He wanted all ten pills. Did David Sullivan really think too highly of Eastern Palm? Or did he think there was no one in the Seven Kingdoms Alliance who could rival him? If David Sullivan wanted a fight, Caleb Pierce would give him one. From the looks of the current situation, the Seven Kingdoms Alliance had an even greater advantage. If they continued fighting, the other party might collapse. At this time, one of the generals of Eastern Palm, a woman in a dark blue dress with ponytails, walked into the middle of the fight. She tried to mediate. Well, it's useless for you people to continue arguing like this. We'll do half and half. Each side gets five pills. That will be fair. David Sullivan snorted coldly. He didn't want to agree, but the general consensus leaned toward it. As one of the great generals, he could only acquiesce, however indignant he might feel. Well, since there is someone here who puts in a good word for you, I will be so merciful as to grant you five of the pills. Seeing that David Sullivan had finally compromised, many people breathed a sigh of relief. Great, these two maniacs have finally stopped. That's right, if they continue to fight like this, we'll be the ones bearing the brunt of their wrath. However, at this moment, Caleb Pierce spoke up. This suggestion is not bad, but hear me out first. Each of us will have four, and the remaining two will be given to Zane Martell. Bang! This statement stunned everyone present, including Zane Martell. Not long after, someone shouted angrily. Say what now? He didn't even put in any effort. Hear, hear! Even some people from Eastern Palm were dissatisfied. It doesn't matter how the Seven Kingdoms Alliance deals with us, but our minimum requirement is five and not one lesser. Everyone's eyes fell on Zane Martell, putting him on the spot. Even Zane Martell himself could not understand why Caleb Pierce would have suggested that. Zane Martell, why is Caleb Pierce insisting to give it to you? I'm as curious as you are. Zane Martell smiled bitterly. 
At this moment, he had become a thorn in everyone's eyes. I don't understand, Caleb Pierce. I never said I wanted the celestial life pill. He asked the other party. At this time, Caleb Pierce smiled. Do you still remember the cooperation agreement we reached in the Cloud Reaching Tower? I do about pill refining. Now, don't tell me. Zane Martell paused for a moment and finally reacted. This was Caleb Pierce's conspiracy. He was attempting to enlist Zane Martell to mass produce the celestial life pill. What will Zane Martell do next? Will he fall into Caleb Pierce's scheme or will he find a way to turn the tables? The stakes have never been higher. Caleb Pierce smiled and nodded, the glint in his eyes betraying his confidence. That's right. My intention is for you to try and imitate the celestial life pill. As soon as he said that, countless people burst into laughter, the sound echoing through the hall. What did I just hear? He's dreaming about refining a celestial life pill. What a joke. The funniest part is Zane Martell will be the one to refine it. Can he do it? He can't. Stop, stop. I'm dying from laughter. You're trying to kill me with this joke and then keep my storage ring to yourself? Is that it? Everyone felt that Caleb Pierce had gone crazy. Refining a celestial life pill was no easy task. Rumors had it that the pill contained a trace of heavenly energy. If an ordinary disciple ate one, their cultivation would immediately be increased by a level. The more talented a person was, the more pills he needed. Even if they were particularly powerful, existences like Caleb Pierce and David Sullivan would definitely be able to break through as long as they ate two or three. However, the pill's refinement method had long been lost, and the ingredients were now extinct. Without the materials, even if Zayn Martell had the shadow of the dragon devourer that could prophesize everything, he was powerless all the same. Fool! You have lost your mind! Caleb Pierce... I did respect you before, given that you were willing to give me half of the ten pills. But now I take back my words. How could I have been so stupid? You, a madman, do not deserve to be compared with me. David Sullivan looked at Caleb Pierce with a strange look. That's right. In any case, it's none of our business how the Seven Kingdoms Alliance is going to deal with the pills. Whether you refine them or throw them away, suit yourself. I demand five celestial life pills, and I will have all five. The attitude of Eastern Palm was unyielding, not giving in at all. Caleb Pierce's face froze. He looked at Zane Martell with some embarrassment and asked, Zane Martell, are you confident? Confident, my ass. I feel like cursing. Zane Martell thought, how could he be confident? He didn't even have the basic materials to make the refining possible. How could he refine them? Conjure the materials with my willpower? Refine the pills using air? Is Caleb Pierce's brain out of its depth? However, Zane Martell did not directly curse. Instead, he spoke in a tactful manner. Caleb Pierce, you think too highly of me. First, I don't know the prescription. Second, even if I do know, where can I find these materials? However, when he heard this, not only was Caleb Pierce not angry, but he also had a smile on his face. Terrific, your words are enough. I've already prepared all of the ingredients for the pill. It's enough for you to refine, look, as he spoke, Caleb Pierce threw over a storage ring. Zane Martell caught it and saw that there was indeed a heap of medicinal herbs neatly piled up inside. The medicinal ingredients inside were extremely rare, many of which had not even been seen by Zane Martell. Moreover, without the shadow of the Dragon Devourer's deduction, he couldn't be sure if these were the materials needed for the Celestial Life Pill. Zane Martell shook his head. He did not wish to help the other party. My apologies, but I'm unable to. Did you hear that? I knew it was impossible for Zane Martell to do that. Not to mention Zane Martell. Even the pill refiners from our God Will sect can't do that. If Zane Martell can do it, I'll crawl down and bark like a dog. Mark my word. Ditto. I won't believe it even if you beat me to death. Me neither. Well, unless the sun were to rise from the west. The others sneered. Even Kevin Strong and the others felt that this was a delusion and that Caleb Pierce was just clowning around. Caleb Pierce, enough is enough. You may be strong, but don't you know how precious two celestial life pills are? Why should I give it to Zane Martell? What if he takes it for himself? I don't agree. 
Kevin Strong frowned and said, Yes, I don't agree either. The room was thick with tension. The stakes were higher than ever, and Zane Martell was caught in the middle of a brewing storm. The outcome of this audacious challenge hung in the balance, and the next move would change everything. Would Zane Martell accept the impossible task? And if he did, could he pull off the miracle that everyone deemed absurd? The answers remained shrouded in mystery, leaving everyone on edge for what came next. Caleb Pierce found himself in a tough spot, but his faith in Zane Martell remained unwavering. Everyone, believe me for once. If he fails, I, Caleb Pierce, will take full responsibility. The crowd erupted in disbelief. Take responsibility? How can you even begin to do that? The pills are priceless. Caleb Pierce's stance didn't waver. At that moment, Rebecca stepped forward, her voice hesitant but firm. I believe you. Rebecca's faith in Zane Martell had only grown stronger over time. To her, he was synonymous with miracles, even in the face of absurdity. Who do you think you are? You don't have a say here. Get lost. Luigi immediately intervened, his powerful aura protecting his sister. Watch your mouth, Kevin Strong. Luigi's superior strength left Kevin Strong speechless. Then Eric Helm added his voice to the mix. I also trust Zane Martell. I don't know much about the celestial life pill, but if anyone can make it, it's him. Inside, Zane Martell was seething. I don't want to do this. Why do they all believe in me? Especially Caleb Pierce, where does his confidence come from? I really don't want to. Zane Martell's thoughts were a whirlwind of frustration, feeling as if Caleb Pierce was pushing him into a fire pit. Suddenly, a voice from the crowd caught everyone's attention. I also believe it! The voice made Zane Martell turn sharply, his eyes locked onto a figure in a purple dress, a figure he knew all too well. You are... The woman removed her veil, revealing herself to be Alora. Zane Martell's heart skipped a beat. She had been so close, yet he hadn't noticed. Elora, you... Zane Martell moved towards her, but Kai Rivers blocked his path. What do you think you're doing? Zane Martell's anger flared. What do you mean? I just want to see her. You're not allowed near Elora. It will only decrease her value. Zane Martell's patience snapped. The chance to see her again was too precious to let slip away. His killing intent became palpable. Get lost. A murderous aura enveloped Zane Martell as an ancient bronze-colored rune appeared on his body. He launched a powerful punch at Kai Rivers. Do you think... Kai Rivers' arrogance quickly turned to horror as Zane Martell's fist shattered his red armor. The impact sent Kai Rivers crashing into the wall, his face pale with disbelief. Impossible! Embedded in the wall, Kai Rivers struggled to free himself, his hair disheveled and blood trickling from his mouth. Zane Martell, you're seeking death. How dare you attack me? As Kai Rivers' frenzied eyes locked onto Zane Martell, the air thickened with impending conflict. What would happen next in this volatile confrontation? The stakes had never been higher, 